Okay, so let's start with uh, Johan van Graan. Munster have said there's nothing to worry about here, that he is only uh, one year into a three-year contract. What, what, what worrying here, right, is that it's possible he would leave for a job where he is so closely connected. Like, this is the one opportunity he might get to get the Bulls job, right? Um, so, if you're unfamiliar with this, and I'd say most people are, Van Graan began his coaching career with the Bulls as technical advisor in 2004. So, obviously, what is he now? 38, that's 14 years ago. He was a very young, 24-year-old technical advisor. And then he helped the club win three Super Rugby titles as their forwards and attack coach. So, this is his club. His mm. dad was the chief executive. Razi, um, who's obviously now involved in running South African rugby at a kind of cross between David Nusifora and Joe Schmidt level, um, handpicked him to succeed him in Munster. So clearly, obviously, he really rates him and is now picking the, uh, the new coach of the Bulls. So, look, if it's, it's one of those where there's an emotional tie to the club. You can see on a personal level why he might think, now is the time for me to take this because I might not get that opportunity again. What about their emotional tie to Munster? Is that just completely thrown out the window here? Does Razi Erasmus just see... Of course, South Africa has to be his priority. He's a professional and he has to execute that in a ruthless manner. But ruthlessness is what this would be if Razi Erasmus is like, nah, I really couldn't care less about the direction Munster are going in uh, under the tutelage of the man I installed to take them in that very direction. Like, I'm sure any human being would feel a little bit of guilt leaving a province in the way Razi Erasmus left, No. Well, it happened relatively quickly. There he, was got them, he got them a uh, like world-class replacement. Well, then don't take the world-class replacement a year later, is what I would say. I think it's fair enough, the situation he left them in. And I completely respect Erasmus looking to further his career. But this little meddling from Erasmus now as, as some sort of puppeteer from afar, it, it doesn't really sit well with me whatsoever. Now, on a personal level... You know, if, if this was reversed and um, Joe Schmidt was part of the Munster... Say, say he goes and Joe Schmidt's part of the Munster thing, <clears throat> and we're like, oh, look, Crusaders seem to have a fairly interesting uh, attacking guy down there who has a you know, bit of a connection with us. Maybe we can yank him. Like, you don't suddenly feel, well, I can't believe those Crusaders are going to... I mean, we have standby... Help those Crusaders, do you? Really? It's quite different. It would be like if Joe Schmidt was coach of Crusaders last year, <laughs> had got Ronan O'Gara to go in as coach, and let Crusaders train up Ronan O'Gara and then poach him just as he's getting good. That's what Razi Rasmus is doing here. Now, it's a bit different. I, I say very much tongue-in-cheek, the idea that he's just getting good. As you mentioned there, he is a prodigious coach, was excelling from a very young level as a coach with the Bulls. Just quickly, the, um, the short list is Victor Matfield, um, Johan Ackerman from Gloucester, and the Southern Kings, Dion Davids. So, who knows? Who knows what they're going to do? The issue is that you're actually open to this, right? And that's because you have a coach who isn't actually part of your system, who isn't from inside. Like, when you go and look at South African coaches and bring them into the Irish system, you are prone to them wanting to go home at some point. Fair point. If Erasmus, or if uh, Van Grand leaves tomorrow, yeah. he's like, all right, I'm going uh, on safari, who do you install as Munster head coach? Felix Jones or Jerry Flannery, and then promote somebody, get, get Paul O'Connell back home to fill one of those coaching jobs? Is that how it works? Because it's, I'd be totally fine with that. I mean, you know what would happen. They'd, take, they'd try and get Stuart Lancaster, wouldn't they? <sighs> that's, that's how that would hurt. Well, they, they, there would be no problem with that. That'd be a, a nice little promotion for Stuart Lancaster. Uh, Step up, <clears throat> uh, feel, feel what it's really like to, to, to get involved in the province sort of thing. That, that would be nice. But uh, I, you kind of say that, and it's like, actually, that's a very live possibility, <laughs> now that you say, if, if there was a, a, an absentee in the Munster coaching ticket. Basically, they will hire from within. And everybody gets promoted from his end. Uh, do, so, you think, do you think they would? Like, I mean, because that, that I hasn't... I think at this juncture they do. Is there, an, is there an obvious head coaching... I mean, maybe there is. Maybe, maybe, uh, or maybe it's a joint ticket between Flannery and Jones. Or maybe there's an, an obvious... Maybe one of those two is the obvious candidate for it. But is O'Gara not the obvious candidate? Right now? I mean, why not? Like, he's, he's saying that he's got to wait a while. But, like, again, you make the phone call, right? And yeah. You say, what, like... What are the issues that you need to address that you feel before you get to this point? Sometimes as well, you can be a little bit too cautious, I'd imagine, in that coaching capacity where it's like, oh, I've got to learn all my trade before I become a head coach. 
thing is, you probably learn a lot of it when you're on the job as a head coach as well. Those the key components of being a head coach, you're not going to learn it as being an assistant. You, you've got to go and you've got to make mistakes. But it comes back to that idea that Jerry Flannery was speaking about uh, in a couple of interviews a few weeks back, where he said in Munster he had the balls to make his mistakes at home. That Ronan O'Gara can at least perhaps get a head coach job away from home, and he is doing it at an assistant level now, and he can make his mistakes away from the spotlight. Once upon a time, there were two brothers. One stayed at home and worked the farm, and the other one went out cavorting around the world and having the crack. And when the, having the crack lad came home, they killed this fatted calf. <laughs> they killed the fatted, the good calf. The big fat cow that we'd been trying to save for, like, you know, whenever I have children or something. That's what that story would be, wouldn't it? Well, exactly. That's, I can already see the opening. Uh, that, that's the epilogue to, Joey, to Jerry Flannery's uh, autobiography, what you just said there. And uh, like maybe maybe that's just a novel that Munster need to buy by now. I think Ronan O'Gara does another year in New Zealand. I think. I, look, I do too. I, it, but here's the thing: the the Razzy Rasmus story was denied, 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 yeah. and then it was like, "See, you, lads, I've got to go. Thanks very much. I mean, it's the South Africa job. I have to take it. Like, it, this isn't. I didn't realize the deep ingrained family connection. This is his team, and they need him." So yeah. there's a possibility that it's going to happen. And also, they probably want to hothouse the best coaching talents in their own country at the moment. Much like I've been saying for the last couple of weeks, I don't care what David Nusifor wants to do with managing minutes, with uh, taking talent and moving it between the provinces, as long as it leads to Ireland outperforming all other performances in history at, at next year's World Cup. So if you put yourself into a South African rugby fan's shoes, well... They're saying the exact same thing. I don't care what it takes. Get all our best talents, including our coaches, into our own country. 